Hello, it's Jesse here, and we're back with the 74 Norton, and we're about ready to start working on the top end. So this is going to be the, probably, hopefully, the the last segment of this section on this motor. And we're going to get ready to get the parts prepared, like washing the cylinder and getting it all ready to go on here, and then we'll go on from there. But here's the cylinder for the Norton, and after having it bored out a little bit and cleaned up and re uh, rehoned and stuff, we're ready for it to be washed up and get it prepared for the bike. We took the the tappet blocks out and set them off to the side for now. Reference to where they go. This was the left side and right side, of course. Anyways, we're gonna get ready to wash this thing up and oil it and get it ready to go on the on the bike. Warm water here, and we got some um, Dawn soap in here. It's hot water, and we're gonna wash the cylinder before we get it ready to go on the bike. Let's get all the grime and stuff out of it. So what you do here is you just scrub the the bores really good, and then uh, we gotta clean the bores back here where the where those tappet blocks were at, or the, the tappets were at, and then. Um, from there, we're ready to put on the bike. Pretty much, we gotta re we got to rinse it after we're done with this, and then uh, we'll put some oil on it, of course. The bores for where the, the tappets went in at, they were actually good and stuff, and we never touched them or anything. They were they were good, so we're just making sure that they're clean. So, yeah, just bog out. It's ready here, and then we're gonna rinse it. Drain it? Yep, drain it. There we go. I'll turn the hot water on. Yeah, hot water. I can tell the soap residue off. Whatever may be left behind anywhere. some air on it there we go so after getting it air dried I uh, got all the water off it it doesn't do any flash rusting or anything and then uh, we're just getting some WD-40 on there just to keep it uh, oiled while we uh, do the next few steps here on the motor rebuild got the tappets all ready to go all cleaned up nice and we'll go over the procedure and install them here in a minute because uh, that's what we gotta do before we get too carried away with putting this on the bike right, we're getting ready to install the, the tappets now they go in a certain way and yeah you want to show that and then we got some special procedure to do this one side is V'd for oil drainage and the other side is smooth so when these go in the veed side goes to the front of the motor this is front of the motor it's upside down but it's front of the motor so it goes like this so I'm gonna put a little extra lube on it You had it upside down, but then you turned it over. Oh, yeah, so it's set. <laughs> set upside down for like a while <laughs> to eliminate the, our, the difficulty of getting it out.
this side. We're gonna. Oh, oh yeah, you're gonna put. Go some. ahead and put some in there. I did it anyway on the other side, but I took it off the lifter. Otherwise, all it's got on it is WD. Yeah, this is assembly loop, so. It won't take long for the oil to get there, but we don't want it. We don't want it to last. Yeah, right. Long enough for it to get there. Right. Because there is time. somewhat of a dry start when you start them up. Yeah, but when it comes to oiling and lubrication, you don't want any sort of delay. V front. There we go. Okay. And then there's like this divider piece that goes in there. And that's what holds them from falling out. And there is a right and a wrong. You can't, if you put it, if you try to put them in there, this way, it, it, the holes are angled. So what you do is the main, the biggest part is, is up, is up over here. Right. The bigger part. Yeah. Because it follows the holes here like that. Actually, I'm not so sure you can even put them in upside down, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. There's, these are a slotted screw. They're special because they, they get wire retaining them in. It goes through this little hole in the end of it, which we'll uh, be going over that in a minute here once you get them all set in place. That way they don't back out locks them better than Loctite can. Unless the wire breaks somehow, but <laughs> yeah. Well. Right? Yeah, I suppose. Gotta make sure it's all the way at the bottom. I like to pull it up. Yeah. Now, these holes are actually miss the screw. See, so what happens here is that that just falls through. So this screw actually goes all the way up against screws that against this solid and it goes up and threads into the thick part. That's just to keep this from doing that. So We'll put some assembly lube on this too when we set it in. Right, and then probably the um, sockets where the where the push rod and engages too right. a little bit. Right, all that. So that'll be all coming up. Hmm. 
Well, we'll work on this. So we'll come back here. There we go. We got it. I don't know what the problem was. We just got to mess with it for a little while, and then it finally went in. But just my wrong angle can be a mile away from being right where it needs to be. So. Just make sure they're getting tight before hold. we go to hold. Before we go to wire it down. Hold. I'm pushing, so you don't have to push down, you push this way. Yeah. We go. We're gonna put wire in here to lock these screws from turning. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Gonna get the right spot and then hold it. So you gotta come up a little bit more or something? Yep, I do. each other on that back side as much as you can yep. and then the tails you just twist it yep. so otherwise it could leave slop <laughs> it allows it to turn a little bit Cut the ears off. And it's tight, see? Don't jiggle. It's tight. Done. All right, on to the next one. Well, this other one over here um, we're working on, uh, they don't, the, the holes don't always line up. And unfortunately, on this one here, they don't line up very well like the other one did. We lucked out with that one. This one here, they're all over the place and we're going to see if we can get it to work. <laughs> Sometimes I take screws out and reverse them. Like start a different spot and no, try again? No. I like switch them around? Move this one to this hole. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> yeah, because that's kind of difficult to... Sometimes that's all it takes. I mean, these screws came out of these holes, but I can't... We didn't mark front and rear. <laughs> 
No, not on that. Usually that don't matter, but well, when it lines up for holes, I suppose it does matter. But we'll see what this one does when I run it in. sideways. Not worried about that yet. Yeah, well that's better. Let's see what this one does. I guess if you had a handful of screws you could mix and choose. Yeah. I can only got these four. <laughs> or are we take them apart, take them out of that other, that Mark III, they might be laying around somewhere. <laughs> Almost the same. Actually, I think that's going to be a lot better. Okay. Because I can get, I think I can get this one up in there. Gonna interfere with the other hole. No, because once you get it out, you can bring it back and then swing, swing in from the other side and pull up through. Sounds like a lot of maneuvering, but yeah, I like that. I mean, well, I gotta bend this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making a hog ring. Yeah, pretty much. Like what we used on your seats. You now you got it started, it looks like. Push it in there, come on. Yeah. Oh, I gotta push it some more. Yeah, well, it's easier said than done. <laughs> Jeez. You can't see much of anything. There we go. Out, part out a little bit. Yeah, I gotta get it turned. So I can get on it. Grab it. Jesus.
I don't know, I guess you could make it easier by loosening that screw and pull it through and then tighten that screw back up and then pull it tight. Or is that not, or is that not work like that? <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. I mean, well, just enough to, yeah, just enough to pull it up and then, too bad I didn't think about it sooner, I guess. There you go. Nice. Is it? <laughs> yeah, is it nice? <laughs> I look like it could work. Am I going to be able to tighten it? Yeah, you'll just bend the wire anyway. <clears throat> Yeah. Not tighten it up there and it should be, I don't know. Yeah, it should work. I think. Yeah. There we got like two or three twists in it. Yeah, we should be good there. Don't move. Now we're going to work on getting the pistons and rings fitted to this cylinder. So. Got uh, 40 over rings and piston set, ready to go in. But we gotta get these rings to, to right clearances, of course, with the right gap between the two. We did this on the on the Tiger motor when we rebuilt it, of course. So it's kind of the same procedure, but uh, we're gonna be covering it in this one too because it's a different bike. <laughs> so anyway. number we're shooting for is 12. All right, so we're getting ready to mess around with these rings. So our bore size for being 40 over is 3.072. And it says that we want, what were you saying it needed to be per inch? Four thousandths per inch. So this is like pretty close to a three inch bore. So, so four thousandths times Three inch. Yeah. That ends up being twelve. Eight, twelve. So here's, here's a twelve and it and it just fits. I don't know, maybe a thirteen fits too. I don't know, but this is stock. Yeah, I can make thirteen fit. It just fits. So we're probably you well, know, we're probably pretty good. You wanna make sure there's a square in here when you're doing this measurement, so you just take the top of the piston and and slide it down I in pushed, there. And I, I follow this oil ring. I push it in far enough to level that all the way around. That way I know I'm square. <clears throat> okay, so we got this ring. Good for here. Now these are cast rings, so you got to be careful when you go pulling these in and out that you don't break one. I'm going to test the same ring over here because if I put them back in the pack, I want to know that it don't matter which piston I put it in or which hole. <laughs> right, otherwise you got to keep them all separated. You might have to, but yeah, got to start somewhere and end somewhere. See how I'm pushing this now? This, is, this, this ring land is high, see? There, it's level. level. Okay, so in the same position on a different cylinder hole. This, this ring measures hopefully the same, or if not, then we know where we need to put it. Somehow my 12 got put away. Okay, okay, here's a 12. Hmm. Oh, the 
this one's tight. It's a little tighter? Well, it goes. a little tighter on this side than this side so what does that mean that means that this this bore here when they honed it to size this this one here is it's probably still in spec but it's probably like a quarter of a thousandths or a half a thousand like micron or know, whatever yeah just a little bit smaller than this size I mean it's you, you don't yeah you just can't. Yeah, 13 don't fit. 12 does. 12 fits pretty easy. So it depends on which. So we you could wanna... call it. So we could call it okay. Yeah, and you just decide which one you want to put it in. You feel better with a little bit looser gap or a little bit tighter gap. So it depends on what our next ring looks like. Probably. Yeah. Now we're gonna test our other one. Now this is just. So far, we're just doing top rings. This is the number one hole. So let's see what this ring really does. Twelve goes, but it's 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 a snug twelve. Just like just like the other. I bet you this one is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be just a shade loose. Just a shade, just a scoosh loose. I could get the thirteen about half to three quarters of the way in. Just fits, but it's tight. So it's, yeah, it's a little bit. So they're about the same, so we don't have to worry about getting them mixed up or anything. We'll just... Both rings are the same. This top right over here. So Unlike yeah. the rings on the Triumph, they didn't have that nice indicator. It said we're top. Had a dot. He had a dot. But you had to look for it real close. It wasn't highlighted. Probably gonna be tighter over there. Probably.
be happy with. To be honest with you, I'd be any more. They're they're recommending bigger, bigger ring gaps than they used to do, like in the books. For some reason, and I'd be happier with I think closer to the 14. So you got 13 to fill in that one? Yeah. This one. So you're probably going to be able to get probably 13, almost 14. This one. Yeah, 14 fit. Yeah, just fits. I'd be happy with that if they all did that. So, I want to see if 14 fits over here. If it does, we'll match the other three. I want the gaps to be all the same in all the rings. Well... You don't want 13s on top and 14s in the middle and whatever the oil ring ends up being? Oil rings are always wide. Yeah. Yeah, 14 fits, but it's tighter. So, <clears throat> I think we will file them. All right, we'll get ready to file some rings down a little bit. Just a little bit. Barely. Just touch them. Just a touch. Just touching them. I'm just touching them. Just every bit so little. He's putting that ring in and gonna check it, but when we go to file these, we gotta make sure that we're. We didn't see that, but he was making sure he was coming in. See if this focus works. See if he's coming in straight when you squeezed it. That square. way he was square when he was grinding on it a little bit. If you don't do that, then you end up having like a weird shape, like a triangle, and then it doesn't seal properly when they get compressed together. There we go. So, anyway, what'd you end up with? I can just get a 14 to fit now. Okay. This was a tight one. That was one of the tight ones? All right, on to the, we'll do this to the rest of them and then we'll, we'll come I'm back. I'm going to shoot for 14 because our loosest one was a 14. Let's go check this side. I like 14. Alright, we're going to go with 14 on these ring gaps. So we're going to do the same procedure with knocking them all out and we'll come back with the oil ring. Still Finishing up our last ring here. Still kind of tight. Is it? Well, the rest of them are all at 14. So, uh, it goes, but it's. it's just it's, touch it again? Yeah, just a touch tight. Yeah. Alright, so the. He's actually finishing that up there, I guess. Uh, the oil rings, we don't really mess with them much at all. They're a three-piece uh, they're a three-piece design ring, so on this one anyways. So it gets one of these center pieces here and then two of these. 
So anyway, we're about ready to put these rings on the pistons and go from there. Pretty good, huh? We put one of the oil ring parts in, scraper. the scraper ring part of it, and uh, this, we don't mess with these, like I said, but we're looking at like a 40,000 40, gap right here. It's a big gap. So, and you it's got to be a big, it. it's got to be a big gap, otherwise oil can't flow and pull and all that kind of stuff on it. So, anyway, we're ready to mount these, these rings under the pistons. This was a Grant set of rings, and they are really nice rings. I would suggest those, but what do I got to say? <laughs> you know, so whatever. They're pretty good. They were a lot easier to mess with than a lot of these other rings we've been messing with lately. So U.S. made. Yeah. I All would right. never use Taiwan rings. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, on to the the next step. Okay. For the next step, here we're gonna get these pistons fitted with rings and then we're going to get the pistons put into the cylinder so we can go on to the next step of installing the cylinder. So anyway, just starting off here we're going to get the stuff out of the packages of course and then lay out the rings how we want them on there in the right uh, configuration and then insert a keeper in one end and then slide it start the um, wrist pin on the other end okay so you start with putting the third ring in first and you always go in from the top these rings these grant rings are are made pretty good because of how they bend both pieces this way some of them bend them the other direction and even though they may have a green and a red, they sometimes overlap real easy. That is bad. So when you get them done with the rails and everything, you got to see green and red. If you only see green or you only see red, you got a problem. So, so just so you know, that's because if that's like that, these rings will never, you'll pump oil and it will not work right. So you put this in first. And look at there. See how easy it is? You got to make sure that that lays over like that. You got to see both colors. Because, see, this, this is actually larger. And it takes a ring compressor to squeeze this in so it, it puts pressure out on the rails. That's what makes it work. They call these scrapers for a reason. And this part is, is like a spring. And it keeps them... Out, so it scrapes real good otherwise you swamp the top of your piston with oil and you'll smoke so, so we got to put the, the scrapers on so you start by these here you just kind of scroll them on here kind of hard to do here you don't want to bend them They're kind of bugger to move on there. Yeah. And you got to be careful not to bend them. So it shows in the book you just spiral these on. And lots of times you can. But I got to get it down on the bottom.
just be happy to get it on that. Just like this. Now we're going to lower it. And we're going to scroll it around. we got to get this one below the other one. overlap now, damn it. We gotta get him back out of here. We gotta lift this back out of here. Gap is now. This gap needs to move. There so. we go. We got it in there. By the way, he had to struggle with picking at it stuff, and it took a while. So I decided to like skip forward a little bit. Got to move this gap to be like a ways away from, from that this gap. gap. Yep. Now the other one, they say to keep it like somewhere around one inch. So, but you know, it can be anywhere from an inch to inch and a half, or even more if you really wanted to. It's just don't have them on top of each other. And have them in different places. So, okay, so here we go. This one's going to be easier. Now let's start and put this one where we want it. This gap is here. The green and red is there. So we want this gap over here. We want this one here, that one there, and this one here. So we're going to put this one right here. Okay, so we got this ring installed all properly right now. See, it's it's a it, it's like a unit thing right now. And we got red and green. And we got the lower gap is here. This gap is here. Keep track of this finger and this finger. And the other gap is here. So here you got it. If you look over the top or wherever you want to look. Yeah, well, each gap is where his finger is at. Each so. each gap is it's split pretty. What, what the idea is, it's split about the equal distance on each side. You can't have them all lined up. Now you can turn this anywhere you want, and that relationship will stay the same. So it's so this one's done. So now we're going to move on to the other one. So we'll put this we'll put this one in. There's red and green. And what I'm going to try and do is. And I'm going to start this ring down here past about where I want to be. And I'm going to spiral it on. And hopefully I stay. There's red and green. Well, that one went easier. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. how it should go together. Yeah, it should. But I'm on the top, so now i got to go to the bottom. Oh, I see. Because it's it's almost impossible to start at the... Very, very bottom? At the bottom, for some reason. For me, it is, anyway. And you can't put that one in first before the center ring? No. No, oh, because uh, there's little key, there's little catchers on the end. Right, it's like a ledge Why, that it sits yeah. into on the, on that center ring. On each I thing. Figured you were gonna say that, so yeah. Otherwise, you have a heck of time getting it 
<laughs> in there after that one's in there. Yes. Just like the last one, when I moved it, it uh, you know the overlap changed. Oh yeah, see. Red. Ooh, it's almost. Uh, it's got to move it now. No, it, it didn't go. Now I'm going to spiral. All right, all so we're doing this again now. We're going to hook it on the bottom and spiral it around. These are the only rings you spiral, is these. There it is. Okay, now there's that. I want to move this a little bit. There we, there we go. go. Okay, the top one is easier. This one's here, so we're going to put this one over here. We got to hook it. You got to hook it in the top, just like that, and you just work it around, just like this. There. Bang. Done. All right. When well, I got that done, now we'll move on to compression rings. I got the gaps, the good yeah. spots. Oh yeah. There we go. Just like the other one. All right, compression rings. So next we do the second ring. They both say top, and all that means is that means up. Yeah, that side goes up. This is second ring. Because I got it out of the second hole. It's kind of blurry right And they here. got a taper on the inside. That's for what, <laughs> what that taper is for yeah. is so that when compression and it fires, the explosion hits down in there. Compression goes down by to the ring, and that taper, compression gets behind the ring and blows it out and creates a C or creates a tighter fit. I'm trying to see that, but yeah. You can see it. You can see it. It's it's right here. It's chamfered. Oh yeah, you can see that, but I was just trying That's to the end of it. That's what I'm talking about. It just won't. Such a minute detail, I won't focus on that, so. This is a ring expander. Let's see. I did put it on top. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I gotta double check everything, you know. Seems how we big. made yeah. all of our gaps the same. We don't have to worry about which one goes to which piston and stuff. So it's a good thing. Ah, gotta be careful with that. It, sometimes it just doesn't want to do that. I want to squeeze it carefully. Yeah, being cast iron rings, they can. Yeah, I don't want to break it. Yeah, they break. Okay, got the, got the first and second ring on. Or, or second ring on the first and second piston. <laughs> now we're going to do the top rings. Same way. Top means up.
we go. Alright. It's done. Now all we got to do is set the gap clearance. This one's over here. So what we're going to do here, where's the top one? The top one's there. So the second one is going to be that one's here. So there. Top one is going to be over here. That's where I want it. This one is here. So this one is going to be there. This one is going to be over here. There we go. Hmm. So you get there pretty much about uh Yeah. Well you put your gaps equal to the wherever you're you know, just as long as they the top one so you don't line this one and this one. See how that is? Yeah. You don't want that there. You want this you want the top one if you're gonna be somewhere around in there. So you got an overlap. You yeah, want, so you, you want, want one eighty apart. Yes. So yeah. 180. Some people put them at one thirds. I actually always been doing it 180, and I've never had any trouble with them. And uh, it's just what you get used to doing. Whatever. All right. So, next step is is we're going to put these in. We can either put them in this way. We can put them in this way. We can put them in this way. I don't know. I just like to. So they go the same direction. It just don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but so, it looks better like that to me. This is the way reason. you want it, then this <laughs> is the way we'll do. These will be inside. So. Yeah. Now, it's important that these, these snap rings, see how rounded this is? And this is all squared. This must be out. Because if you put one of these with the rounded edge to the out, Thrust will come in there, and it it can have an easier time popping out. If you put the sharp edge out, it bites, and it won't. You have, you'll have a lot better success rate if you sharp edge out. Got the sharp edge. There's the round edge. Round edge is going in. to make sure I'm in all the way. Yes. Yeah. There's a certain way you it's just I too, don't right? like I don't like these this gap laying on this side or this side because it's going up and down. So you can either have these holes high side or bottom side. But it never made sense to me to put them sideways because of the inertia. It's that moving so fast up going and down. Going up and there's down, it, you know, because going up and down is like this. It, you know, that's uh, just makes. If you think it's going to come out, you think that was what would do it. <laughs> I was taught by a guy that do it this way, so that's what I do. And there again, I've never had a wrist pin keeper come out. We thought we did on this bike, but it. Yep. We were. Turns out the machinist was messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that had been like the first one that messed up, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never ever had it happen before. in the grooves okay so 
There's that, there's that. Yeah, let me just start the wrist pin on the one side and... Now there's lots of different ways of doing this. It seems to work pretty good this way. We do it, but for us anyway. Yeah. The only difference is, is you got to make sure you oil this real good when you put this together. So, right. Now, now there's lots of schools of thought on this too. I personally don't oil the rings. I put oil right on the two skirts. I put fresh oil right here and here. I lube the wrist pin and I lube the connecting rod with uh, with uh, assembly lube. And so that way it's got a good, till oil gets there and washes it out. But I don't put assembly lube here. I put motor oil here and motor oil here on the thrust side and I don't kill it with oil. I just give it a a light taste because because that's what you want yeah and um, and I normally just like when we clean this I put a coating of WD-40 on it and I leave it and I put this together and when we start it up rings bed in within real quick All oil right. pressure gets there real fast it's never been a problem and um, now I I have taken some, and I probably will, a light coat of oil on the cylinder, just a little bit, just uh, to make sure it's not completely dry in case the WD-40 just disappeared. Yeah. All, right. All right, well, we'll move on to the next step then. Starting off, we're going to put this piston in. Maybe. in. Now we've got to be careful not to put it in any further than the wrist pin. And the keeper's here. Right, so we have to slide the wrist pin in from the side here when we right. set on top of the rods. Right. And, yeah. yeah. Now all i got to do... So we already kind of coated the cylinder here with some oil. Just a little bit. Just... And then we made Fingers. sure that we, we uh, on the tappet blocks here, we put some semi lube on there because it's going to be hard to do once we flip this thing over and try to put it on the motor. Bottom just put a little oil on the skirts. A little oil. See, a little. Most of it's getting wiped off. But I'm just going to oil up the skirts. Try to leave the rings mostly dry. Now when I push this piston in, it's only going to be upside down, so there's going to be some that's going to end up. Yeah, there'll be some oil on top. and They'll get some oil on the rings. But once that's all taken care I of. I don't want them drowned. Yeah. Then they'll get, they'll go away and then, in, yeah, if we do this all right, it won't come back because it'll be all sealed, so. Yeah, we just make sure that we have a little bit of the piston showing on the top so we can Set it there. align it. And then we already got this gap set, so all it should do now is just press the piston down in there. Right, well, next step is putting it on the rods. And, and then what we'll do is we'll oil these and set them like that. And then we'll set them on the rod and push them into the rods. All while holding and so I can put the keepers on. And yeah. Then, yeah. All right, so we'll get the base gasket put down, and we're gonna get ready to stall that uh, 
cylinder on piston assembly group together here. I got the camera sitting on the tripod over there, so we can use all of our hands. Hopefully this turns out really well. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and get ready to here. So last time we did a top end on this thing, we didn't use any sort of sealant on the base gasket that I remember. It just kind of like adhered itself to it. And we've never really had a base gasket leak on any of our Nortons that we've done this to before. It's set up differently in the Triumph because of the oil system and stuff. And well, we're not going to put nothing on it and we'll see what happens, I guess. Get it in there? Well, you got to hold it at the right angle. It's starting to go, but... I'm trying to hold it as square as I can, I guess. We'll just... Alright. Now this side. Yeah, now this side. There's the rod out here. Look through that. Look through that hole. Do you see the rod? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Is it high or low? It looks like it's right, but you're too far forward. That better? Yeah. It just goes right in. Well, yeah, but okay. I'm gonna hold this. You come over here. Let's trade places. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Now don't let it fall. Now I got to put the keepers in. And it's just leave. <laughs> We're doing good. You cut yourself? Yeah, imagine that. Okay, sharp edge out. Bye. 
it. Yeah, make sure. to cut two places. This thing there and this thing. Okay. Got it? Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, okay, it's good in there. Let's see. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, now we can, now we can start to push the pistons down in there. There we go, we got the cylinder down. Just got it down here, and then now we're ready to start putting the, the, the base nuts on and running the the through bolts through here. And remember, then, we gotta lift it long enough. Well, that's right. We got we have to lift it up a little bit. Lift it enough to get those nuts on. Get it started, and then lower it as we go to go to tighten it up, like we saw in the very beginning when we were taking it off. So anyway, we're getting ready to do that here to keep this thing from tearing up the gasket and everything when we go to lift it up in the back. We're gonna install these front ones just a little bit so we can't go too too high. It'll stop us. So that's in theory. We've done it before like this and well it might work again. So it was on that little one. Yep, the washer of course first. And then the base nut. This is tall. Is this the right one? Yep. Okay. All right, I got it started by a tire two, and we're gonna try to do the back ones here now. These are bigger, right? Yeah, I think they're yeah they're a bigger diameter. That's right. So I have a delayed reaction. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about what you said there. I'm like, yeah, beer diameter stud. And I think, I think these are the nuts for it. Now these go inside here, and these go here. So you want to lift it up while I put them in? This goes up here. These are the two for there. Yeah, we're gonna have to lift this. You wanna? I'll lift this up. You ready? Yeah. All right, got the one started. Now, when you put these down, there's a squared edge and there's a rounded edge. Did you put it on correct? Yes, because it 
you can see the sharp other, edge down. You see the sharp edges down. So okay. yeah, like you said, I did it without thinking. So yeah, here's what it looks like: sharp yeah. edge on the bottom, and the rounded edge at the top. Don't put it on upside down because it'll look stupid forever. <laughs> yeah, really. I just did it like muscle memory in a way. So there we go. There you can see it now. All right, so I'm running them down as he's lowering it. All right. Okay. And there's a right. There. I did it without. They're all that way. I did it without speaking again, but you can see the the rounded edge on top and the squared off edge at the now bottom there. Now there's two washers. What are you saying? Nothing. Okay, well. The one that goes up under the head don't get a washer. Well, probably. This one uh, had a washer. To keep this video kind of like nice and enjoyable in length, because <laughs> I want you to see everything, all the details that we did here. I'm gonna probably we're probably gonna end it this segment and do the head in the next video. But uh, we will put these all in. How we'll do is we'll finish. We'll put these four in. Yeah, the four through bolts, like I said. We're gonna torque these down in this video, and then we'll torque the top ones. And then the next segment we'll be doing the head installation. All right, the big through bolts, our big Allen bolt. Make sure there's a washer on there, of course. There we are, and then what we'll to reference the our torque spec chart we got, and then uh, go from there. But unless you know it offhand, but um, we're gonna have to look it up. Well, here's our torque chart. Uh, got the stuff of Andover Norton, the source. Um, you can find that pretty easily at at uh, this website, I believe so. And uh, anyways, it talks about all the different head bolt settings here. So in the manual here we have 750, 850. They're not much different but you can tell that the... Um, 750 don't have through bolts. Yeah okay 750s don't have through bolts and anyways so starting off with the 850 which is the front right side um, for the piston. So it's the through bolt. The first one we do is the through bolt on the. So this would be. Are you watching? This is the first. This is one over here, then two. Oh, wait a minute. Let me start off her. Yeah, okay. So this is number one. Then it comes back to over here to this one, number two. But then it goes forward to three. Then back to four. And then it does the outside diameter down here. The so problem, the problem is, is we can't get a torque wrench on this one or this one. Yeah, we can't even get a dog, a dog bone on that one. Nope. We can get dog bones on this one, this one, and this one. Well, so we'd have to use like a crow foot. That's another style of open end. You got a 7 16 crow foot? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look. I don't think I have one, but... Anyway, back to the. Let's look for him. He looked for that. And back to this though, but it talks about um, the settings for each uh, each bolt and whatever too as well, because the different shadings of the of the um, the bolts here. So these lines is is a two twenty foot pounds. The little cross hatches is uh, thirty foot pounds, of course, and the blacked out one is twenty five foot pounds. This nice chart here from the Andover Norton website fills in the detail on everything. It's our cylinder base nuts, our head nuts and bolts, 3 8 ones, the sizes, and our through bolts, and then so on. So we're going to get started here. This is what a crow's foot adapter looks like. It has the open end wrench style and it's built for a socket, in case you didn't know. We need a 7 16 one, and this is way too big. This is a 7 8 um, We don't have the right size. 
So we're going to have to use our best judgment on the base nut, I guess, that we can't reach. And we should be able to feel what what that measurement is, you know. That should be about lines. That should be about 20 foot pounds, 240 inch pounds. We should be able to figure that out. One. All right, so three bolts are 30 foot pounds, and one is up here. Where? This, this one. one. That's one. I'm gonna come back to it. Where's number two? two? Yep, two. Three's up here in front. Okay. Yeah, on that one. one. Yep, that one. And then after that, it's a, a okay. base huh. one. Now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna do. So we're going to hit these at 30 right now. Here. And that one. Yep. Right, so all through bolts are tight. Okay. And then five is this back one here. And that's, uh, yeah, that was supposed to be at 20 foot pounds if you, for judgment. Even if we got a crow's foot in there, there's now not much one? room in there for the. Now, which one? This one? The head's in, head in there. Yeah, that one. Okay, now which one? And then right over here. the front ones. The front one on your on the front middle one it says oh. next one. I got it. Yep. And that one's supposed to be 25 foot pounds. It's a little bit stronger than the back ones. Okay, then it's your side front, and then, then over here front. And that's on. Yep. And those were, yeah, like we did before, those are uh, 20 foot pounds. All right. Well, that pretty much ends this segment here on the installing the cylinder and pistons and stuff. And now, uh, coming out in a little while, we'll work on, next we'll work on the, the head and go from there. So keep on the lookout for that uh, video coming up. And we'll pretty much be not knocking the whole bike out by then. Hopefully we'll be able to finish it up and maybe even test ride it in that one. So we'll see what happens here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed everything.